welcome I know Joseph Tunji for this session can we clap our hands as he comes forward keep clapping some people say the louder you clap the faster your blessings I don't know how true but the louder you clap the faster he may come hallelujah God bless you sir Praise the Lord. Loving in the face of hatred. He who controls the land controls people. The fire can only keep on burning when it has something to consume. Can you Clap your hands to worship the King of Glory. Thank you, sir, for allowing God to use you. You have been a blessing to us, and forever you shall remain a blessing in Jesus' name. Brother Abdullah Ibrahim. Am I right? God bless you, sir. I want to appreciate the privilege given to me to stand in your presence to be a blessing to the body of Christ. I want to appreciate the leadership of this uh, fellowship. Uh, all protocol being observed. May God bless you and all the members of the fellowship. God bless you in the name of Jesus. Yeah, shall we pray? Eternal Rock of Ages, we thank you, Lord, for grace to be here these days. Thank you for what you've been doing right from Thursday. Thank you for what you're about to do. Thank you, Lord, for what you're imparting upon us. Thank you, Lord, for shining your light on our path. Thank you, Lord, because after this conference, our lives shall never remain the same again all the glory in the name of Jesus. This session will come into you into your hands. We pray it will not just be theoretical or academic session only, but it shall be an inspired session in the name of Jesus. Thank you, King of Glory. In Jesus' name we pray. Um, our moderator says something about believers that approach a wealthy man for financial assistance and the response they got. There was a particular sister. She is a believer. But she has an unbelieving brother and that one is a stinkly rich or less. And she went to her brother for financial assistance. And that one asked her, Maybe you are a Christian. The sister said, yes. And you want to make heaven? The sister said, yes. And she said, I cannot give you out of my money. Because this money you are seeing is a richer money. And for him, he had mortgaged his soul to the devil. That there is no way he will make heaven. Except God have mercy on him. So he said, I am not to give you this money because it is a money that is gotten uh, uh, in an ungodly manner which will not allow me to make heaven. And you will make heaven. So if I'm giving you out of this money, you make heaven, and I didn't make heaven, then I'm the one that suffer most. And that is why as believers, we must know what to do to make it financially at the same time to create several sources of income. And I'm going to give us several things 
that we need to align ourselves into that. And thank God because uh, may I believe, and I'm, I know I'm saying the truth, anyone that works in an oil company has a better chance financially more than some average Nigerians. Am I right? Confirm. Am I right? All right. So that means we are at a better advantage to create for the world, for ourselves and for our nation. Praise the Lord. So what is multiple streams of income? We understand the meaning of income. And when something is multiple, that is, it is minimum of two, four, six, like that, and like that. So when we are talking about creating multiple streams of income, we are talking about you opening channels, funnels, and ways of multiplying that which you have and generate more income from the little one that you have presently. I'll be mentioning eight areas that you can generate income. Number one is from an income. So your salary, you earn it. Number two, profit income. When you go into business and you make sales and you deduct, you deduct your cost of um, sales and your associated distribution admin expenses, then it gives you what net profit. And out of this net profit, there are some other things that you will need to take out of it. The, out of it, the remaining one is what you are going to call your own world, your own profit. Number two, interest income. Number three, interest income. Number four, dividend income. When, okay, let me talk about the interest income. Interest income, you have fixed deposit in the bank. But I believe you must have been hearing people telling you that why keeping your money in the bank these days. But you know, we have people... They have, I mean, some sizable number of income. For example, I met someone, and uh, when I saw what the person was earning in a year, as a matter of fact, the person paid 20 million pay as you earn. That is the task. If somebody is paying 20 million naira as task, Within one year, you should look at that person is spending something small. Am I right? So, such an individual can say, okay, even though they are telling me that I should not put my money in the bank, I will still create maybe like 10 million naira and put it in fixed deposit. So, when you put your money in fixed deposit, the interest you earn is called the interest income. We have dividend income. Dividend income, where you invest in the... Um, uh, financial instruments, uh, stock, shares, what to earn. It could be quarterly basis, it could be annual basis, and sometimes within one year, two years, they might not give you anything, depending on the level of their profit, profitability. So what to earn from your, DV, uh, from your uh, uh, investment in shares, stocks, is called dividend income. Then you have rental income. You have capital gains income. You have royalty income. An example of this, mind, I'm going to drop this um, material because of our time. So we need to move fast. Royalty income from, let's say, mining license, software, franchising, and the rest. Then intellectual property monetization. We'll come to that one later. Praise the Lord. Now, when we are talking about streams of income, you can categorize all the ones I've mentioned under three categories. 
the first category has to do with active income. The second category is passive income. And the third one is residue income. So the active income is the income generated from activity, from the word active, activity. Praise the Lord. So let me just use this Yoruba interpretation. Koshi Koje. And this is the level at which majority of people are operating. If they don't work, they don't earn anything. So you have to be there physically. Your time must be invested into it. And your money must be invested into it before you can earn. So you call that one active income. It must be, activities must be involved in it. For example, like wages and salaries, from being an employee. And if you're an employer, then profit from your activities in that business. Then number one, then number two is a passive income. Income that has little effort to maintain. You know, that one is another level from active income. That active income, you have to be there. You have to supervise. Sometimes you have to clock the time of resumption and uh, your employee, your employer will be watching you and monitoring you. But when it comes to passive income, your time is not being invested into it 100% or it might be a been issue just for a period of time, short period of time, and after that, you, your presence is no longer needed. Number three, which is the residual income. Residual income is the money that continues to flow after initial investment of time and resources has been completed. For example, realities, rental income, interest income, and dividend payment. So, as you are seated, I want you to begin to look at how you can be generating income in all these three categories. And it has to be so, and I'm going to give us that reason. Now, it takes us to why is creating and generating stream of income important? Why? If it's not important, then we don't need to talk about it. If it is not important, we don't need to labor ourselves on this. One of the reasons why it becomes important for us to begin to think and put in place intentionally practical measure, mechanism on generating streams of income is the word VUCA word. VUCA word. The word VIDIA means volatile. The second one is uncertainty. The next one is complex. That is complexity. And the fourth one, which is A, is ambiguity. If you look at this world, we are believers. I'm a pastor. But at the same time, we must face the reality of what is dawning on us in this present time and in this generation. You will agree with me that even when you make some kind of financial projection, sometimes it doesn't come the way you projected it. Why? Because of the volatility of the environment. For example, in 2019, COVID 19 broke out in foreign land. And we only hear the news. We're reading it, we're hearing it, but suddenly in 2020, it became a reality in Nigeria. And from March towards March ending, there was an instruction that nobody should congregate, nobody should run business as usual, nobody can travel anyhow, 
And even if you want to travel by flight, it has a number of people it can accommodate. So the way we do business was disrupted. And as a matter of fact, some companies, they are yet to recover, as I'm talking to you. We, we consult for some of them, and we know what they are going through. In fact, some of our clients, they are yet to recover up to now. So, those people, they will have fantastic business plan, projection, but it doesn't, it didn't come out the same way uh, the plan is. So, vol volatility, uncertainty, complexity, and ambiguity. The next one is inflation. <laughs> wow. As of 2021, January, your one million naira that you, you thought it is a money, I believe one million naira is nothing to some of you seated here. <laughs> but that same one million naira now, what that one million naira will buy as at January 1, 2021. Maybe you will need to add extra 500,000 500, naira to it before you can buy that thing now. So one of the reasons we need to diversify our income is because of this man, this rugged man, this man that we have not been able to tame, not only in Nigeria, in some other country. If you hear the inflation rate of some other country, you will ask, how are they surviving? If our home is around 16, something to like 20.5% now, then how are some other country that has like 50, 70, 100 plus national rates, how are they coping? So, because of inflation rate that is just jumping and galloping, we need to create additional source of income by sending the little one we have, part of it, into an errand to go in the future and begin to work for us. And over the time, either in short time or long time, they can be generating additional income for us. Job losses and is permanent in this life the only thing that is permanent and constant in life is god and change so when we have that one at the back of our mind that whatever we are saying today we are only saying it by the grace of god we need to have it in mind that we need to generate generate additional source of income. Why? Because of job losses. Um, for us, in this kind of industry, probably it might be uh, the rate of sacking people, the rate of retrenching might not be like some other corporate world, but in some other corporate world, you can get to office today, especially in banking industry, you want to enter into your system, no accessibility. Once you click and you, have, you, you can't enter with the same password, what they are telling you, go and meet the child. And that is the end of your service there. The next one is, every one of us, we want to enjoy good quality of life. For example, me, I'm a believer, <laughs> I'm a Christian, but except suffering for the work of God, for the kingdom service, all of that one, I don't pray to suffer. Mm -mm. I don't pray to suffer. The Bible says you can be persecuted for righteousness sake. Don't be persecuted like unbelievers, like sinners. So if you are put up for your faith, that one is okay. But in poverty, is persecuting a man. If poverty is 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 is, <laughs> is punishing a man, 
then that is wrong. It's not good. Amen? So, as believers, we must enjoy our life. I normally say that, How many days do you want to spend on this terrestrial world and you are wearing a coat of um, iron? Amen? You remember when uh, David wanted to face Goliath? So look at him. And he doesn't know the kind of God he was carrying. So look at him. Say, you are too small to face this champion without being guided. And he kicked David. And David said, no, 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 no. I have not proved it before. Amen. Maximizing your God-given potentials. Exodus 31. From verses 1 to 5. Exodus 31, verses 1 to 5. First Corinthians chapter 12, verse 7. All of us as we are seated, we have special gifts in our life. You have special potentials and talents. Which if you don't tap into it, you will only go to office, do what you want to do, come back. Go to office the following day, and you will do that one for like 30 years. By the time you clock 65, they say retire. Or you are put in 30, they say go. And for the rest of that 30 years, that potential is being locked up. So, when you identify that potentials on the inside of you, even beyond what you have been that is making you to earn that salary, you can now use that salary to help that potentials and God give ability in you to create further income, wealth. The next reason, becoming a blessing to your generation. When you are blessed, then you have become a blessing to your generation. Living a transgenerational blessing for your descendants. When we get the issue of agro-business, you will understand what I'm talking about. One of my clients, I visited him one day. And he told me, said his father said to him, I'm not sure the father is alive again. He said, you must invest in plantation like palm oil, palm, uh, uh, palm oil or palm tree plantation, cocoa, cola nut, and the rest. He said, because even after your demise, if Jesus tarries in his coming, because these plants, crops, they have a longer gestational period. They can give back to several wells, even after your demise, that your children can inherit. So by creating further streams of income, you are living blessing for your incoming generation. And the Bible tells us in Proverbs chapter 13, verse 22, a righteous man live inheritance not for his children immediately only, but his children, children. Now, if you don't create further source of income, if you don't preserve this one by any, then how can you live inheritance? To your children, children. Then the last one is, it is biblically supported. Yes. Can we see Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6, a new living translation precisely? Ecclesiastes chapter 11, verse 6, new living translation, please.
I'm waiting. Okay. In the morning, so, no, I said, New Living, NLT. We don't have it. Wow. Okay. There, he said, in the morning, or do we have anybody that can read it for us? God, sir. So that I want it to be precisely quoted. Yes, sir. Plant your seed in the morning. And keep busy all afternoon. New living. Uh, the version I'm trying to say, it says, you know the crop that will yield whether one or both. Now, the word of God is full of several inspiration. It's NIV. Help us read it. So you're sitting in the morning. All right. Praise the Lord. Let's move on. So, if you read Ecclesiastes chapter 6 and you look at it in the area of giving, you are right. If you look at it in the area of becoming a philanthropist, you are right. If you look at it in the area of business, investment, you are right. So, what we are talking about this afternoon, this Ecclesiastes chapter 11, is equally applicable to what we are looking at. The question is, what do I have? What do you have that can help you to generate streams of income? Number one, time. Time is life. Time is money. As a matter of fact, time is everything to a man. If you have wasted your time, you have wasted your life. If you have wasted your time, you have wasted your resources. I worked with one employer some years back. A management meeting is a one-man business, but it has branches. And it was saying it in the presence of everyone. And for me, when you speak, I hold so something out of it. And I will hold it till God will help me. He said, do you know the reason why I employ all of you? Do you know the reason why I have branches? Even sometimes if some branches is not making money and I'm still supporting that branch. He said, the reason why I'm doing that is because I can't be everywhere. He said, you will be everywhere for me while I am sponsoring you. So what man has done is to mortgage their time by using his own resources. One month, two months, some branches might not even make anything. But when they will make bemo, bemo. And most of those bemo goes into his own further investment. He pays staff salary. Sometimes he gives them allowances, much more allowances, to make them happy so that they can do more. And as they are doing more, he's reinvesting the world. Praise the Lord. So the question is, what time do I have to generate for that income? If your, your home is to enter into office, he took the money, and you will not leave office until 5 p.m. And sometimes they will even call you on public holiday in the office. That means the entire time is what? Mortgage. That means it's not available for you. But some people, they have the time. Though they are working, you know, when you have some, ask some people, why do you want to go and work in 
federal government plus starter ministry, they will tell you because I, I want to have time for myself. What is another teaching again? Nigeria is full of wastages and lackadaisical attitude. So, but let's leave that as, but if you are engaged, we have some people, they work perhaps, or they work, they, they, they don't resume to office every day. They, either they work intermittently, go to office today, tomorrow they will not go, or they go two days, and the rest two days, they are free. You can plan something around those free time. The next one is talent. What talent do I have? What are the natural ability, potentials that can help me to generate further income? What are the training, the skills? These are the things that can help you. You can monetize your skill. This era we have, we are in an era of social media. And they told them that whatever thing you are doing, if you know how to cook a particular soup, you can convert it to money. At your, you are doing it at your leisure time. You can even do it in the midnight. Just stand in the front of um, social media handle and give the lecture. 15 minutes, 10 minutes. And you are watching how money rolls into your account over some time. The next one is property. Plan and equipment, which we call fixed asset. You have three cars, four cars. What are you using them for? If you have many cars, and you discover that these cars, sometimes one will be lying down there for the next two months, three months. Or maybe when you use it, you use it once in a month, in a while. And it's just there like, it's not, it's not an asset for you, it's a liability. So why can't you convert one of those cars if three is what you need? Why don't you convert one of it and put it into business? Whatever I generate for you, you might, you might decide not to be using it. You might decide to be reinventing it into another uh, income asset generating uh, instrument again. You have lambs, you can let out for the while. Um, let's move on. People. I've mentioned about people now. People around you, they are source of income for you. As a matter of fact, your greatest wealth is uh, your greatest source of income. They are the people. If you have products and you don't have people, your product cannot skate through. Anywhere you see people, money is there. I will not mention the name of a particular uh, person I had a teaching. Young, young lady, 30 something years of age. But he said he targeted, his target is 1 million US dollar from training and coaching. Now, let us assume that she eat that figure in dollars, convert it into naira now. That is what? 700 million plus. So if that person is able to hit it in succession within two years, she becomes a billionaire. Am I right? And that is how some people make it suddenly in life. Sometimes I thought that it is everyone that just eats it suddenly that has to do one thing or the other. No. No. So in the next two three, if that person says I'm a billionaire, you'll be wondering what have you done to get to this level? The person make you take advantage of earning in dollars and converting it into naira. Let's assume that you are able to hit a million dollar 
and you convert it into Naira. And you're not going to real estate. You're going to agro. You're going to logistics. In the next five years, you'll be wondering at the level you'll be up in. Then the available funds. The day or the moment you are saying this money I am earning is not enough. And you are postponing your investment. That time is going. Investment. Time favors investment. I'm telling you. So, if you have the opportunity to invest on time because you have some kind of money or idle fund, after you have dealt with the issue of necessity, you have surplus, then you better do it and do it on time. Time favors investments. The investment I will go to at the age of 60 years, when I am retiring, even if I'm stacking a phone somewhere, you can't compare somebody who is dropping 50, 50,000 naira every month on a lucrative investment, well-proven investment. Praise the Lord. Source where you can generate multiple streams of income. Number one, investment in the financial instruments. But you agree with me that presently, the stock market is nothing to write home about. Except you can wait. And you know, when we're even talking about investment in the stock shares, you have to wait. Though we have some that are short term, just to gain, uh, uh, they call it um, capital gain. But there are some that are for a longer period. And may I tell you, everything has a season. The stock market may be down today, but it will not be like that forever. There were some years in the past that stock market was like that. But in the era of 2000 up to 2004, people cash out. I mean, during the era of Soludo and the era of uh, is it this woman, Okereke EDD. Am I right? People ca ah. If you put one millionaire in investment then, that one million naira can, can give you like uh, 20 million, can give you like 30 million. I remember when Japo came out. Japo Hoy came out. And it was, was it 2,000 naira or 1 naira or something? And that moved to like almost 10 naira. Almost 10 naira. Within a short period of time. So, you can look at Treasury B. Can look at financial instruments. Put your money there. If you, the money that you know, if you put there, it will not affect your children's fees. It will not affect your feeding. It will, and you can put it there for a while. With time, when the economy of the nation, which we are believing God for, pick up, stock market too will rise up. The next one is production. Or manufacturing. But you know, as far as Nigeria is concerned, this area is also, uh, it takes strong mind, strong God, and energy, resilience in this area. Why? Because the cost of production is too high. And people prefer, rather than them producing here, let them import. So when you produce here at higher cost, and you put your profit margin, and somebody just imports at a lesser cost, then your whole product will be affected. 
because uh, Nigerian consumer, they will never pity you. That, oh, this is a Nigerian. Ah, that person has labored so much to get to this level. Let us encourage him. Ah, miss, but no go do that. <laughs> and yes, now, every man, when it comes to purchase, every man is selfish. Are you not selfish? I'm asking you, are you not selfish? You will consider your own interest. So if I want to buy this at the rate of one million naira, and somebody now say, oh, because we've been encouraged to produce, my own is 1.5 million naira. I'll look at what that 500,000 naira can, can do or can further generate for me. So I will go for the one of one million naira. So if our, our, our leaders, our governments, they are saying patronize the made Iran product, made in Nigerian product. People, when they have alternative, they will go for the best. Is it? So, but if you know that you have done your part, feasibility study, you've done your business plan, and you know government policy favor this sector, favor this product, and it is the product that people need. They can't do without. And you know you have the technicality amazing, to control your cost and to get your product out uh, in a cost-effective manner. Then you can look into production also. Then the next one is buying and selling. You can buy and sell. It is what you buy that you will sell. I know this era, they are claiming many importation business. Ship dropping. These are the areas you can look into when you have your time. You can be in Nigeria at the comfort of your room. Import goods from China and have ready market that you can sell to without leaving the comfort of your room. Aside that one, you know, there was a client of ours was making money, graduate, I mean, to say to, so to say, and the wife worked with him in the same office. And that is danger. Even if your wife will work with you in your own office, let us see have something that I can do aside that one. Sort of them will resume to that office, and when the beast collapse, nothing to fall back to. Praise the Lord. You can empower your wife, especially if your wife is not a career person, and you have that fund. Empower your wife. She Okay, or your husband. <laughs> hey, men are jealous. Okay. You know, in some places, wives, they hen more than the husband. Yes. We are meant for one another. So, wives here, empower your... Husband here, empower your... Let us go into buying and selling. Of what the people needs all the time. The next one is supplying contracts. If you have people on top yeah, that can connect you. There was a time, I think this year, I was in Najib. And I was asking one of their staff there. I said, if let's assume that I want to become a contractor here, how can I become one? And he looked at me, he was. <laughs> As he said, it's tough. Oh. But if you know somebody at the top, or you know one of the distributors or suppliers or contractor, you can be a sub to that. 
happening. You are working in such an environment or outside the oil and gas industry, you have people that are connected. There is nothing stopping you to have your own company register and have somebody that can mortgage his or her time to do the runs for you while you generate additional source of income. Praise the Lord. Professional services. I believe before we got to this level, you print. Some of you, you have your own certification in your own feet. Nothing stopping you to generate additional income from professional services. The only difference that will be there is that you might not be able to run it on a full-fledged like people like us. For example, I have some professional colleagues, friends, some work in oil companies, some work in the telecom, some work in banking sector and different sectors. They have their own registered firm too and maybe during their leaves, during their, so they structure their audit engagement around their leave period. So you can earn additional income from professional services by making use of uh, your professionalism. Praise the Lord. The next one is real estate investment. My God. Hmm. Uh, I keep telling people, if God should just smile and say, Tunji, I know, where have you been all this while? This is a good money. I am blessing you with. The next thing is going to be a state. Praise the Lord. In real estate, there's something they call land banking. You look at a particular virgin land where you know it, it has a uh, it's promise, uh, it has a um, uh, prospect to, gen to develop, to grow after you have done some kind of proper search and you make sure that that land is not under government acquisition and you involve all the legal documentation buy that land keep it for a while and begin to resell later. That is what they call land banking. There's another business in real estate they call uh, short lets. Short lets. Short lets is different from hotel. It's different from guest house. Short lets, for example, as you have come, maybe from Portaco, from Wari, from Abuja, from all over the nation, and you are looking for a particular place you want to lodge for this period. In an hotel, they don't permit you to cook. Whatever thing they are preparing there is what you will eat, although you can order. But you can't cook. But in a short let apartment. Everything has been uh, uh, furnished there. You can prepare your own food. Sometimes when you go to hotel, there are some things that you see. There's some kind of that you will not want such a thing in your environment. Short let helps you to maximize this opportunity. Now go and search the internet. I can't remember. What is the site? Yes, God bless you. Go and search. Sometimes you'll be thinking that in my hog body, eh, where I'm living, you will think that they don't have. Now nah, lie. We have. Even in Abu Leg, we have. So if you are thinking that maybe your own place is a bit remote or this one, it only takes you to put it on the website and make advertisements. 
it is school money than building for people to come and stay. I'm not saying we should chase people away from our houses. So. I'm just saying it, let it become additional source of income. Go and check. Some per night, um, $20, $15, dollars, depending on your area. There was one within, there is one within this lucky VI as is 70, uh, how much? Seven, uh, seventy dollars. Praise the Lord. If you have such, and there are some, they are booked next year. Booked next year. This is cool money. Or you look at a particular property in a good location. You buy, you renovate, and you sell. Wow. Okay. Um, all right. So let me quickly rush it. But am I blessing us? God bless you. System automation via internet. People are making money on the internet. It's not all the people that are making money on the internet are Yahoo, Yahoo, or they are children of the devil. So if people are making money via internet, why can't we make money via internet? Agro and allied. Wow. Everybody must eat. And when it comes to agribusiness, we have value chain. Yours might not be the one that you will go and buy land or cultivating it. No, no, no. Look at a particular value in the chain value and put, your, put yourself in that space and be offering your own services. Your could be equipment. Listen. Oh. Logistics is there. Um, things to do or do before committing your resources in an investment. Number one, knowledge of the business and the industry. Number two, the legality which has to do with structure and the formation of the business. Either the one you are starting or you want to enter into. Business model. If somebody is telling you that uh, bring uh, uh, 50,000 naira by tomorrow, we'll give you 100,000. It, it doesn't have business structure. It's business model never exists. Mm -mm. Any business you want to introduce to me and it doesn't have strong business model, I will never be part of it. Then look at the promoters. Who are the promoters? What are their testimony? Is a business insured in case of any eventuality? Um, government policy governing uh, the business, existing market, or the one that you can create. Sourcing and protecting. Securing and protecting your businesses and investment. Number one, you have to have that business register with called a fair commission. You must have uh, partnership deed if you are going into partnership. Then you must trademark marking so that somebody will not infringe on your rights. Patenting, copyrighting, trade secret, then will writing, will writing. I was told, or were told, regarding that the moment you begin to acquire property, you have to have a will written. And you have to update it. You have to keep updating it. Me, that is still talking. I've not written my will. Though. I'm also guilty. Though. But you know, one of the things that, make, that gives us consolation, which we, are, we still need to do, one of the things that gives me solution is, well, she be, I'm a man of uh, one wife. My wife lost me. My children, the, nothing I do, carry them along. But no, still withstanding. <laughs> still what? Right it. And when you are buying assets, I learned this not professionally from one of my sister's in-law. So when they were buying party, they would put the name 
of uh, Mr. and Mrs. So, 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 so is wrong. It's wrong. Because that Mr. can become anybody. That Mrs. can become anybody. When you are buying property and you are uh, putting the name there, for example, my name is, I will give you my full name. I know Joseph Tunji, Mr. I know Joseph Tunji, and Mrs. I know Victoria Bosset. Every asset you are buying, if you have made such a mistake in the past, you can go and correct those documents, but if you still don't want to correct it, going further, let it be like that. The moment I had it, since so that time, if I buy some more thing, I put it like that. Praise the Lord. Succession planning. Time will not permit us to take this. When you have pro why are companies dying in Nigeria? Why don't we have companies in Nigeria going into several years into generation? Only few. Why? There is no proper succession plan put in place. The next one is business continuity planning and recovery mechanism. Defensive mechanism against hostile takeover. The last one is ways of raising funds for your business and investment. The first one is personal savings. Personal savings. You come to me, I want to go into business. How much do you have? I don't have anything. Then you are not serious. Because you yourself must have made some sacrifice. If I give you money, let us assume I give you like 5 million or 10 million. If I have that money, you might not really take it yours. But if, and that is why the bank will say, bring your own equity. After you have brought 30% equity, they will say, go and bring collateral. Go and bring your, your house. And you know, if you default, over the, over the time, they will foreclose. And they will, they, they, they call when they do their valuation. Because they needed the money quickly. They said market price and for sale value. If the market price is say, 50, 50 million naira, the for sale value might be 35 million. Sell it, give us our money. So if you have stock, you have 30% and you have giving them your property, you will not go and sleep anyhow. Even if economy recession, there is economy recession, you will pray like no man business. You will read. You will strategize just to make sure that you survive the terrain. Praise the Lord. Phone from family and friends. And sometimes it's not always easy. <laughs> then divestment or asset liquidation. You have some assets. And you see a lucrative business, you can liquidate some of those assets, put into it. Then you understand. You have some business, amen. Crowdfunding, joint venture, agent investor, cooperative society or fund pooling system. Cooperative society. We just audited a particular cooperative society, and when I saw what they were handing, I said, "Wow." This is an opportunity, I'm telling you. Cooperative society. Make use of it. Fund pooling system is in from a cooperative society. Fund pooling system. You have like five, ten people of like minded. You can come together, raise funds that a single person cannot raise and take advantage of the market. Praise the Lord. The last one is bank facility. Starting from microfinance bank, bank of industry, bank of Africa, agriculture, Naira commercial bank. Thanks so much for the opportunity. Let's pray. Let's pray. We say with prayer. So, oh, question, please, before the prayers. Question. The question they gave me five minutes. Five minutes. All right, so if you have question, you can raise up your hands. We'll give you the mic. All right, there's question here. Thank you very much, sir. Thank you, sir. Some people used to say there's premature retirement. I want you to throw more light, throw 
some light on it. Okay. Is it, do you, is it true that there's premature retirement? Or does it actually exist? When okay. somebody retires, maybe he's supposed to retire in the next five years, he's asked to go now. Okay. So, what do you think? Praise the Lord. Now, pre-retirement -re -re uh, scheme. You can do that voluntarily or it can be forced on you. But that issue of forcing is very real. Now, we have a pastor that relocated to uh, UK of recent. And he works in a oil company. Golden she is a small boy. I'm telling you. When he got to that oil company, we did feel he built a good structure in a good a choice environment. He said he had made up his mind that he wanted to retire at age 45. And he's still less than 50 now. So, it could, you, can, you can voluntarily do that. Then the other aspect, because it is legal, it cannot just be forced on you that you have to go now because it is constitutionally recognized the retirement age but they can double carrots to you you know there was a place i said i went to and they said they dangle carrot i mean juicy offer that they that even if i stay to the next five years can i even have this type of salary i bet give me the money let me let me leave but then they collected 300 million 350 million, 400 million. And they can go and start their life with that. So, but for somebody to say they want to force you to retirement, that you should, you should live before your time, Constitution does not, um, uh, does not permit that. So, it's either you do it voluntarily or they don't go carrot to you. That's we want you to live on time so that we can give you for contrast. We are paying you too much, so much. Did I? Am I right? God bless you. Any yes, other? Sir. Another question here. Yeah. yeah, sir. Hello, sir. I'm this way. Okay, sir. Uh, I want you to talk more on this rate. Okay. Uh, with I discover that every day I get a lot, and it's minus ten naira, minus twelve or fifteen naira. Government is. I. Fee deposit. Okay, sir. Uh, we don't know how they calculate this money. They will just tell you ten percent per annum. That time, is it one one day, uh, two naira or two kobo? Uh, because, but we don't see it. Can you just throw more light? Praise the Lord. Thank you, sir. Savings account. I remember in those days, we always like to open savings accounts. Because at the end of the day, you know that something will drop. But now, in um, COT, management, is management that at the end of the day, even if they are giving you anything, it has, it has taken the whole thing. Now, CBN increase interest rates. That interest rate is not in the favor of the depositors. The interest rate is the lending rates. So at the end of the day, when you meet the interest you're supposed to be earning and the one you are paying on the borrow, it doesn't match up. It's the law. So whatever interest bank is giving to you, they must have done the application that it will not pay. That is the truth. I'm not speaking against them, but that is the truth. All right. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Yeah, you said... Um that you cannot be retired prematurely. Okay. Yeah. There is a distinction. Okay. If you operate in the private sector. Okay. okay. You could be retired prematurely. Okay. okay. Yeah, and yeah, a lot yeah. of the companies. I didn't mention that. A lot of the oil companies are actually private sector companies. Okay. If your employment doesn't have a statutory flavor, you are not constitutionally protected. Okay. Yes, that is one. Then the second is, would you prefer a gift in Tivers okay. to a will? Okay. 
in our present circumstances. Let me, let me hear you again. That will you prefer that I do gifts okay. in survivors okay. in my succession plan okay. to writing a will? Okay. Praise the Lord. Will is more stronger than gift. Am I right? No, no, no. That, that would not be true. Okay, let me... Now, what a gift, what a gift in survivors means okay. is I have a house in Ibadan. I can give it to my first son. Sure, sure, sure. Now, sure. I might even collect the rentals until I die. Sure. sure. But there will be certainty that it belongs as to, to succession. Okay. Yes, because there are legal instruments you can use. Okay. Yeah. Okay. We, today, we tend to prefer it to wills because your will could be challenged. In fact, there are many in court today still fighting over the wills. Okay. And, you know, will to the, your legal advisor or your solicitor can collide and manipulate the will even after your deems. All right, sir. Praise the Lord. Uh, yes, there's one person there. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you very much for the wonderful lecture. Um, the thing I wanted you to emphasize in is risk management. Okay. Because I knew of uh, one who retired and put all his pension money in the agricultural sector in terms of farming. Okay. Understanding the circumstances in Nigeria, Nigeria's problem is not power, it's personnel. We don't have sincere personnel. Unfortunately for the man, the 120 million he invested was managed by a thief. And the company closed after a year. So how do we manage such a risk factor? All right, praise the Lord. You must be able to spread your risk. For me to collect a whole sum of 120 million and just put it into particular just one single streams of income and you know that agro i don't know whether that person goes into plantation that will take some kind of a longer period or maybe that person goes into livestock whichever you are going into you have to diversify and that is why we have talked about uh generating income through different sectors that 120 million, you can put some into real estate, some into agro, some into logistics, some into financial instruments, and you watch. And if one is not favoring where well, you divest it, you liquidate it, that investment and put it into the one that is more favorable. Praise the Lord. Okay, let's just take one more, one last one. And we go. Good evening, everybody. My name is Nonso. Okay, um, it's interesting you're talking about millions okay. and billions. In this same oil and gas industry, there are people people that talk thousands. Okay. Pay they pay them in thousands, fifty thousand, thirty thousand. Okay. Everything you said is in millions. Is in millions. Okay. Because the, because you are millionaires. Yeah, yeah. All the investments you mentioned are in millions okay, sir. and billions okay sir the people you are talk i'm talking about are here okay with us okay what advice do you have for them the as punishment okay because i know that you cannot buy land of fifty thousand naira. it used to be like that in the past Mba. you cannot buy some things in fact they can they, they barely feed okay so to even remove money now and say let me even save ten thousand is difficult for them. How do you advise them to invest? Okay. Thank you. Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. The best and first investment you should do is to invest in yourself. Beyond what you are earning as a salary, you must develop a particular skill that you can monetize that is the first thing then the other aspect is 
locate, you can go into savings or cooperative society. Maybe at the end of the year, you have the opportunity of collecting. You have been able to save like, um, let's say, maybe 100,000. And you are able to extra 100,000. That is 200,000. Am I right? Then you can start from somewhere. Now, and how can you start? I have told you about earning on the internet. For example, this drop shipping business, uh, mini importation. There are some mini importation you can start with 50,000 naira, 100,000 naira. And when you are growing it, you will be building your wealth grad in order to be able to take advantage of bigger businesses. Praise the Lord. Okay, I said we are going to pray. Shall we pray? Father, we thank you, Lord, for grace. We thank you, Lord, for impartation. We thank you, Lord, for opening our hearts. Lord, we thank you, Lord, for the knowledge sharing. I set our praises in Jesus' name. Your word says in Deuteronomy chapter 8, verse 18, that thou shalt remember the Lord thy God, that he is the one who gives you power to get words. Father, the power could be in the form of ideas. We are asking King of Glory that you give unto us a supernatural ideas, revelation ideas that will help us to generate wealth in our generation in the name of Jesus. We pray for wisdom to run a business successfully in the name of Jesus. Where those opportunities are locking up, we pray that you open our eyes unto it in the name of Jesus. And as you are blessing us, may we remain humble and may we keep on serving you. And at the end of the day, we we'll reign with you in the heavenly kingdom. In Jesus' precious and mighty name we pray. God bless you.